Hi, I'm Senator Rosemary Bayer. I'm from the 12th District, which is in Oakland County. Yay! Yay. Yay. Thank you for coming this morning. Um, thanks everyone for coming today. I would first like to recognize uh, Senators Chang and Moss and Representatives Wittenberg, who you will hear from shortly, uh, Carter, yeah. also hear from, and Holy, all our lead sponsors on these bills. So we're here today because we are in the midst of a public health crisis. Yeah. We must do something about this. In this state alone, over 1,100 people a year die by firearm. So today, a package of universal background check bills because we cannot ignore any longer this senseless violence. It is time to take action. Yeah. So we know we have a problem and a big gap in our federal gun laws that let people purchase firearms without a background check. Under the current law, unlicensed sellers, people who sell online, gun shows, anywhere else without a federal dealer's license, can transfer firearms without any kind of background check. Because of this loophole, domestic abusers, people with violent criminal backgrounds, people who are prohibited for mental health reasons, really people who shouldn't have guns, can easily get guns from unlicensed sellers. No background checks. In Michigan, we are overdue in requiring background checks for all firearm purchases. Currently, there are 12 states plus Washington, D.C., who have universal background checks for all firearm sales. And there are six states, including Michigan, that have a permanent background check just for handguns, <coughs> not for long guns. So our goal is a safe Michigan. And we can achieve that if we work together and take action now. Universal background checks proven to reduce both homicide and suicide, death by firearm, are a great step forward. Recent data show that more than 90% of Americans support background checks for all gun sales. And we don't have that. And so guns are still finding their way in the hands of illegal buyers traffickers, all things that increase the likelihood of both homicides and suicides. We need the universal background checks and we need them now and there should be no loopholes and no exceptions. So we can and we will create a safe Michigan for everyone, for our families, for our kids, our seniors, so everyone is safe and protected no matter where they go. All right, now I'm gonna turn this over to the chair of our Gun Violence Prevention Caucus and longtime fighter for the cause, Representative Robert Wittenberg. <laughs> uh, it's so nice to see all of you here. Uh, good morning, thank you all for being here. Um, as Senator Bayer said, my name is Robert Wittenberg. Uh, and I'm the state representative in the southeast part of Oakland County for the 27th House District. Uh, I am the co-founder of the uh, Legislative Gun Violence Prevention Caucus and, and currently the chair. Uh, and actually one of the co-founders is Representative John Hoadley as well. Who helped yeah. come yeah. And uh, I don't know if she's here yet, but uh, Senator Stephanie Chang as well. So a round of applause for her as well. Uh, and, and as legislators, uh, there's no responsibility more important to us than ensuring the safety and well-being of families throughout our communities and throughout the state. Uh, in, in recent years, the gun violence epidemic has plagued almost every corner of our state and nation, leaving countless victims in its wake. Yet too often after these tragedies occur, after the course of thoughts and prayers has come and gone, we continue to suffer from the silence of inaction. And while no single policy reform will heal our hallowed hearts or end this epidemic, continued failure to act and mitigate this threat is not only irresponsible, it is Im immoral. Right. Michigan residents.
residents deserve to feel safe and secure in their homes and on their streets knowing that criminals are not able to readily access firearms. In 1993, the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, NICS, was created after the passage of the Brady Act into federal law. Since then, more than 300 million background checks have been completed, leading to more than one and a half million denials. Those denied often carried a violent criminal record, and those denials undoubtedly saved lives. A 2019 study by Boston University's School of Public Health found that states with laws requiring universal background checks had homicide rates 15% lower than states without these laws. This system, which often can handle a background check inquiry in less than 10 minutes, serves to keep our communities safe. Unfortunately, while background checks are currently required in Michigan for pistol purchases, they are not required for long guns, such as AR-15s and shotguns. These bills take a strong step forward in ensuring criminals cannot easily access firearms by expanding background check requirements to all gun purchases. And just to tell you a little bit about the legislation, literally it's the change of one word. When we go in there, where it says pistol, right now it says background checks for pistols, we change that to firearms. It's that simple. Words, you know, they have meaning and it's important. Uh, so that's how, the, how we work that in this legislation. In some states, uh, the effect of sound universal background check legislation is even more staggering. Residents across my community and throughout our state understand the critical role background checks play in keeping our communities safe, which is why it is so important that we pass this legislation to include mandatory background checks for all firearm purchases. These bills also update the criminal procedure and sentencing guidelines for people who forge information on their firearm license application, provide false statements on their firearm sales record, or knowingly sell firearms without performing a background check. In a moment, uh, we will hear from Pamela Leblang, close, <laughs> I apologize, Pamela, Pamela. Uh, to share her story about how gun violence impacted her life. But first, an unfortunate reality must be brought to light. For every survivor of gun violence, there is an ever-growing tally of men, women, and children who were robbed of their lives as a result of gun violence. Today and every day, my colleagues and I stand up for them as we seek to even the odds in this battle to end gun violence. We can't continually do nothing and expect that things are going to change. Mm -hmm. The time for action is now. Yeah. So I want to thank you all again for being here today, and then I want to pass it off now to Pamela to tell her story. My name is Pam Lydline. I live in Macomb Township. I'm a survivor of gun violence. I want to tell you about my daughter, Michelle Packard. Um, in May of May 4th, 2012, she graduated from Michigan State University with her PhD in Biosystems Engineering. On July 4th, 2012, my daughter, her fiance, and his six-year-old daughter were a family, uh, went for a family outing at a city park in Lansing. She called me at 8.30 to tell me they were there early so they could get a good spot to sit. She was looking forward to watching the fireworks display. That spot turned out to be the worst seat in the park. At 9.30, I received a call from her fiance. He told me Michelle was unconscious and he was following an ambulance, carrying her to Sparrow Hospital. Witnesses stated that they thought she had a seizure as she had fallen out of her chair. At 11.30, he called back and told me a CT scan showed a bullet lodged in the base of her brain, a bullet. I called a friend to drive me to Lansing. It was the longest ride of my life. The word bullet told me this was a fatal event. I just wanted to be there to bring my daughter home alive. That was not to happen. I arrived at the hospital at 1.30 a.m. to find my beautiful daughter unconscious and on a ventilator. Her sister Elise arrived at 7 a.m. after driving from Iowa 
and learned of the bullet in Michelle's brain. Together we made the decision to donate Michelle's organs. She was pronounced dead at 9.30 a.m. July 5th, 2012. The whole experience was surreal. I had to convince myself it was really happening. Michelle, after all, had been in a safe place, a normal holiday tradition, enjoying a summer evening with her loved ones. Guns and bullets were not part of our lives. The physical pain that tore through my body is one I cannot describe. Police believe someone was shooting a gun into the air to celebrate the holiday and their Independence Day rights. Because two hours of valuable time had passed from the time she was hit until the bullet was discovered, finding the shooter is something that probably will never happen. Since my daughter's death, I have worked with Moms Demand Action in her honor to secure better gun laws in our state and country. Gun violence has reached epidemic proportions, a public health issue. As defined, public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of people and their communities. We appreciate the efforts of these lawmakers to strengthen our background check system in Michigan because we know improving these protections are one of the most effective means of making our communities safe from gun violence. Thank you. My name is Sharon Swindell. I'm a general pediatrician and the president of the Michigan chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak in support of these important bills. Firearm injuries are the second leading cause of death among children and teens in the United States and in Michigan. Frankly, I find this both astounding and heartbreaking. With the leading cause of death, motor vehicle accidents, we've changed policies, laws, technology, engineering, have funded research with promising results, yet we failed to do the same with firearms. I hope never to receive another call from a distraught parent about a child or teen who's been injured or died from a gunshot wound, either self-inflicted or inflicted by someone else. These are calls I'll never forget and were not something I thought was in my job description. And sadly, I'm not alone among providers receiving these calls. The numbers don't lie. This is a public health epidemic, crisis, emergency, whatever word you wanna use. 100 Americans per day die from guns, Higher numbers of youth at younger and younger ages are committing suicide with guns. Mental health, depression, and anxiety clearly come out of this issue for you. I think we are increasingly numb to the seemingly daily reports of shootings. Universal background checks are one essential part of reducing firearm injury and death and keeping firearms only in the hands of responsible gun owners. The vast majority of citizens, gun owners included, support such measures. This is common sense. Yes, we also need mental health resources, safe storage, smart technology, and other measures. We need it all. But let's start with this one important step. Thank you again for introducing these important bills, and I urge your fellow legislators to support them. Thank you. And thank you for coming. My name is Brenda Carter. I'm the state representative for District 29, and I was asked to tell my story because legislators are not immune. In 2007, 
my nephew was traveling to a grocery store in Grand Rapids. I got a call from my sister, Carolyn, and she told me Randy was dead. He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. The damage of cutting Randy's life short still affects our family every single day because communities of color are disproportionately affected by gun violence. Where you may have an episode, an unfortunate episode, in mass shootings, we have shootings every day. We, for 11 years and two days, suffered with the loss of my nephew until I received a call uh, July 30th, 2018, that my only son, Brian, had been shot. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time here in Lansing. Fortunately for Brian at that time, he survived the shooting. He was taken to Sparrow and they were able to help him recover. But he was left pretty much disabled. He had three young children and these children needed a father to get out there and work and bring in resources. But Brian was incapable of doing that because of this gun injury. This took a traumatic toll on him mentally. And I believe in my heart, it was the reason why I got the call September 14th, 2019, that Brian was dead. We must, must take this epidemic seriously. <coughs> what happens to our young people, what happens to our seniors, what happens in our nation is affected by our inability to move legislation like what we have here today forward. If we had been more proactive, maybe Brian would be here today. So I encourage legislators statewide to support these bills because what they will do is take those guns out of the hands of people that have nothing better to do than to shoot somebody at a fireworks display. Thank you. stories. It's very hard to talk about it, I know. I know. And thank you all for coming. Um, we are uh, happy to take some questions now uh, at, your, at your convenience. Exactly how many bills are they and when do you intend to introduce them? So there are uh, three bills and in, in the identical way of the House side and the Senate side. So there are three bills. Uh, the lead sponsors in the House are uh, myself, Representative Holy, and Representative Carter. And then in the Senate, they're all being introduced today. Uh, Senator Chang, who is here now, and Senator Moss, and I are the sponsors of those three bills. And we have them here, and we're going to uh, get some co-sponsors on the floor, on the House, and I don't know if yep. you did on that, and then we're going to introduce them today or tomorrow morning. What would you say to the uh, gun rights advocates who are saying, you know, this is just another way to take away our second? So you'll notice that, that there, there was no conversation about taking away guns here today. What we're talking about is permits and background checks. So even the gun owners are in support of this, even in just surveys of just Michiganders, most Republicans and most gun owners are in favor of these. So it's common sense. It's the logical, responsible gun owners want this to, to be under control so that they don't lose even more rights. And what we're trying to do is prevent the guns from getting into the wrong hands. And that's what this does. And again, this is something that's already happening in our state, but it only happens on pistols. And so what we're saying is that all these weapons are deadly and we should do a background check. That's the least we should do is be able to do a background check to make sure that this person is qualified to own this weapon. So we're not taking guns away from people. We're trying to keep guns out of the hands of people who are uh, intending to do harm to others. Yep. Um, These background checks, um, what kind of database is being used on these background checks? Is it a federal database yes. or is it a state? 
federal. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Where mentioned it earlier, so but and the ICS. All states, all states feed into this database? Yes. Can, can feed into this mm -hmm. database. Not all do. Okay. But we do obviously currently with pistols, pistols. but not with okay. long guns. But it's a movement, right? This epidemic is not just in Michigan, so it'll spread, it'll keep spreading. Any sense if you have any GOP support on, on these bills? Uh, we have been uh, told that we'll have a hearing in the Senate, and that'll probably be the next step forward. We'll work to come to that. And, you know, like on the House side, again, we're also, today, this is, you know, when we're planning to introduce this, so we're going to talk to some of our colleagues. Uh, and I would hope that we would, because, again, uh, we know this is the right thing to do for public safety reasons. Uh, but also, if you look at polling, uh, that there's been polling done that shows over 90% of people, and there was one poll, unfortunately, it was right after Stoneman Douglas happened, that 97% of people uh, supported background checks, including, I think it was 96% of uh, gun owners yeah. and NRA members who were supportive of it. Because again, this, this, is a, this is a mechanism that we can put in place that actually, you know, if, if guns are getting into the wrong hands, it makes the responsible gun owners look bad as well. So this is something everyone should support because we want to get guns and keep guns out of the hands of people who are intending to do harm to others. I don't have statistics, but I assume that Republicans lose their children to gun violence too. So if this doesn't pass, what can we as taxpayers do about it? This will be your opportunity to reach out to all the leadership um, in Michigan, also in the federal government, right? So we can do this nationally. It's easier to do it one time there. We'll do it here and we'll make our own rules until we get that federal support as well. They're all, all of them as we go through the legislative process and go through hearings, it's your opportunity to come, it's your opportunity to talk to members of the committees and then members of, the, of each of the houses to encourage that support for this common sense legislation. Is this something that's gonna help you in the next four working days? And if so, how is that possible? <laughs> no, uh, no, our session doesn't end uh, for another year. Oh, okay, so this will be for 2020? Yes. Well, for now, I mean, this is we introduce can. it now, but we have until the end of next year uh, to get this <laughs> moved through the legislative process. We aren't gonna take our time, though. Yeah. <laughs> You had a statistics for 1,100 uh, gun deaths a year. Where do you guys get those statistics from? And is there any kind of general breakout between homicide, suicide, accidental, any kind of general numbers? Um, the data that? actually comes from the CDC. We can send you the source if you want that. Yeah, um, myself another reporter would like that. Hmm? I said myself another reporter would probably like that. Thank sure. you. Sure. Yeah, we can get. We have our, our staff here as well, uh, and we know also. You know, uh, it's about 60 percent of. Uh, gun deaths or suicide as well, and so we're you know not talking about today, but there's other measures that we're working on as well, uh, no notably extreme risk protection order red flag laws to try to uh, mitigate suicide with firearms as well. And we don't think that one piece of legislation is going to end all gun violence, but we know that doing nothing, uh, nothing's going to change, and we need to actually take steps forward. And we know this legislation, uh, the data we have from other states shows that. Uh, that you know the, the 15 percent lower homicide rates in states that have universal criminal background checks there's also data from other states that show up to a 40 percent reduction in homicide rates and a 15 to 18 percent reduction in suicide as well just having less guns reduces suicide it's that basic yes um i'm assuming it will go to committee in each of the health branches next yes. which what committees will it be going to we, we, we won't know until once you introduce it, then it gets assigned a committee, uh, but there's no guarantee that it actually gets a committee hearing. So that's why we uh, encourage all of you, once we know where the, the bills have been assigned, what committee they've been assigned to, uh, we want people to speak out and, and, and reach out to the chairs of those respective committees to encourage them to have a hearing. And you'll know within a couple of days what committees they're assigned to. Yes. Yeah. How would one's name get into the federal database? Whose names? So it comes from the application for a permit and background checks. So when you go and buy a pistol in Michigan, you have to fill out a form that goes into the database, the federal database. So it's your voluntary uh, application for a, a handgun, basically. So how would you know if someone's name was flagged? 
So if you, you go to get a background check and your name is Blake, so you're not going to get a gun. How does someone who's running that background check understand that that person should not receive it? Hey, Greg, no. <laughs> 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 it gets denied. The approval gets yeah. denied. It's an online database, so it's an immediate. In fact, it takes 70 seconds to access that database and look someone up. Have you spoken, have you spoken with the majority leader yet about uh, having a hearing on this? Uh, it's been several months, you know, with the red flag. With the red stuff, flag. So yeah, we will talk to him. I, you know, you know that the budget kind of slowed us down a little bit on some other things, uh, but we'll talk to him right away about this one because there is overwhelming support amongst the people of Michigan. And on uh, on the House side with the extremist protection order legislation, the chair of the Judiciary Committee, uh, Representative Filler, uh, he and I have a good relationship and we've been discussing this legislation. Uh, he has not promised a hearing, but he has promised uh, for the two of us to sit down and revisit this issue after uh, the new year. So, all right. We have to, Thank you. That's all yeah, the yeah. time we have for this. But we'll stick but what around. we'll do right now, um, if anyone in the room is a survivor or a medical professional with experience in this, and if you want to stand up, the press can see who else is available to speak if you want to talk to anybody. You're welcome to stand now. And thank you for being here, everyone. And all of our colleagues.